Recording in progress. Hi, students. In the last lecture, we have learned Newton's universal law of gravitation, and we have solved problems based on that. Let us see now next one, Shell theorems. So, what is the meaning of this is Shell theorems? Let us consider a spherical shell. Consider spherical shell and assume that distribution of mass is uniform. The distribution of mass is uniform. Now, the first theorem says that if you imagine any point mass inside, anywhere inside okay it can be anywhere inside then it experiences no gravitational force i am repeating we are taking a, a thin spherical shell distribution of mass is uniform that means we can say density is now same everywhere okay now if you consider a point mass anywhere inside it experiences no gravitational force. That is a shell theorem one. Okay. Now coming to second one. If you imagine point mass outside, if you imagine point mass outside, then we can take the entire mass of the shell at its center of mass. Suppose its mass is M and this is a capital M. Okay, so when you want to calculate gravitational force acting on the outer body because of this shell, then we can assume the entire mass of the shell at its center. Suppose the separation equal to it is R. So when you are taking that center of mass, now question is just like two point masses. And between two point masses, how to find gravitational force? We are moving from uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation, right? That is F equal to directly G M1 M2 by R square. Okay, directly. So shelter one says that if you take any point mass at any point inside, it experiences no force. If you are taking outside, assume the entire mass at its center. Okay. These are shell theorems. Now see how to apply this. For example, we are taking a solid sphere. So we are taking here one solid sphere. Suppose the radius is capital R and mass is m so here we are taking distribution of mass uniform what is it distribution of mass uniform in such a case if i am taking now outside one point mass what is it i am taking outside one point mass what is the force means gravitational force by salt sphere on this point mass See, here we have taken because of a shell, right? This is not a shell. And here we have learned we can replace mass of the shell with a point mass at its center of mass. Now, using that logic in this one, this is now solid sphere. We can take this as a combination of spherical shells. I am repeating. We can take now salt sphere as a combination of spherical shells. And we can replace each spherical shell with a point mass at its center of mass. That means what happens is we can replace the entire mass of a salt sphere with a point mass at its center. Getting the point means the same result now we are using here. Taking as a combination of spherical shells and for each spherical shell replace its mass with a 
it's a mass at center of mass. Then what happens? The entire mass will be at center of mass. Okay. So this is a valid only either distribution of mass uniform. Otherwise, density changes only with the distance from center. I will write here. So one is density constant throughout. This is one possibility where we can apply. Second one, density is a function of R. So changes only with the distance. That means even though density is not uniform, but changing spherically symmetric. Okay. Then what happens is if we take one spherical shell of radius R, for that spherical shell, density is a constant. Get the point. For that spherical shell, density is a constant. Means again, same result, yes or no? For that spherical shell, replace its mass at its center of mass. Again, we are taking number of spherical shells and replace their masses with a point mass at center of mass. That means, this can be applied whenever density constant or density changing only with distance. Right? Therefore, we can replace the entire solid sphere with a point mass. So again, F equal to G M1 M2 by R square. Okay? Right. right. Let us see one more application of that. The second application. Let us consider solid sphere. Solid sphere. Let us take a point mass at a distance. At a distance, take it as small r. Okay. Its radius C is a capital R. Mass is M. Okay. So we are placing a point mass at a distance R from center. And we want to calculate gravitational force on that point mass. Let us see now how we use shell theorems in this problem. So now what I am doing here, I am imagining one sphere of radius small r. Okay, imagine one sphere of radius small r. Okay, right. Now, let us use the shell theorems in this one. This sphere can be taken as a combination of spherical shells. Okay, now, spherical shells which have radius greater than small r, okay, means for those shells, this point is now inside. I am repeating. This sphere is taken as a combination of spherical shells. And if I am taking spherical shells beyond this one, okay, beyond this one, for those shells, this point is now inside. And we have learned that inside at any point, it experiences no gravitational force. That means you no need to worry about like shells beyond this, beyond this point, okay? So because of outer shells, no gravitational force. Next, remaining is now, this is solid sphere of radius small r. This is now a solid sphere of radius small r, okay? Now, it is on surface. Then what we can do is, we can replace now this is solid sphere with a point mass at its center of mass. Okay. So finally, what happened? Even though we have taken a sphere of radius capital R mass M, but it is now combination of spherical shells, the shells beyond this one. So for those shells, it is inside point. Therefore, it experiences no gravitational force because of those shells. So remaining is only solid sphere of radius is small r. And because of that, what happens is 
we are taking this as salt sphere as a point mass at its center of mass. Now question is just like, suppose this mass is smaller and mass of a small sphere is, take it as m dash, okay. Then, then force equal to g m1 m2 by r square, okay. So in the place of m dash, see what I can write, g small m by r square. In the place of m dash, I am writing here, I am writing here, m by r cube into r cube, okay. Students, see carefully how we have taken this one. Simply, I have taken m by 4 by 3 pi r cube, means mass by volume, that is now density, into volume of a small sphere, 4 by 3 pi r cube, okay? So, 4 by 3 pi, 4 by 3 pi gets cancelled. Remaining is only m by r cube into r cube, okay? Now, this becomes, now this becomes g m1 m2 r by it is r cube okay this is now gravitational force acting on that point mass okay so like this we can use a shell theorems okay no? so first one is if you take a point mass inserts spherical shell no gravitational force outside Assume the entire mass at its center. So just like a point mass. Right? Now see statements. A uniform spherical shell exerts no gravitational force on a particle placed anywhere inside. Okay? It need not be at center. Right? Next, a particle exerts, sorry, it is actually experiences gravitational force. Sorry, it is, sorry, it is a, a, a uniform spherical shell exerts gravitational force on an external particle as if its entire mass is at its center. So this is not a particle, it is actually a uniform spherical shell, okay. In the place of this one, a uniform spherical shell exerts gravitational force on an external particle as if its entire mass is at its center. Okay, shell theorem one, shell theorem two. See next one. Gravitational field strength. Let us see what is it. So here we have seen in Newton's universal law of gravitation, even though there is no physical contact between the particles, or you can say between bodies, there exists a gravitational force, like I am taking M1 and M2. So even though there is no physical contact, right? M1 exert a force on M2, M2 exert a force on M1. Okay, to explain this, we are taking field concept. That is, if you are taking any object that has mass, it may be point mass, it may be, may not be point mass. The only thing is, the object must have mass. Then, it creates gravitational field in surrounding space. It creates gravitational field in surrounding space. Okay. Now, if any mass comes into that region, that field exerts a force on that mass. Okay? So, what we are saying, any object that has a mass creates gravitational field in the surrounding space. If any object comes into that region, then that field exerts a force on that particle. Okay? 
So now we want to know how much of force it exerts. Or you can say we want to know that field, how to define that. Okay. So we define here. Intensity of gravitational field, or you can say field strength, it is defined as limit M naught tends to zero F bar by M naught. See what is meaning of this. Assume that in the in this entire space. Gravitational field is there. Assume that in the entire space there is a gravitational field, and the cause of this it can be a point mass, maybe combination of many point masses or something else. Okay, just assume that in the space there is a gravitational field, and we want to know at one point what is the strength of the field. We want to know. At one point in the field, what is its strength? Okay, then, then we have to imagine one one unit mass, or you can say mass, at that point. Okay, but condition is here. We are saying that electric field, sorry, gravitational field is now present in space. Now, when you are placing a mass. This also creates gravitational field. In such a case, this is going to disturb the existing gravitational field. In such a case, what we are going to get is not exact value. So we are taking here M0 should be very, very small. The meaning of limit M0 tends to zero. That means we have to take a mass which is very small almost zero but not zero when m naught is very small this cannot disturb the existing gravitational field okay that's why we have taken here limit m naught tends to zero then gravitational force it is going to experience is f bar divide that force with m naught okay so what we are doing is here we want to know strength of the field then at that point, imagine one particle of mass m, where that mass should be very, very small so that it does not disturb the existing gravitational field. Then force experienced by that divided with the mass. Okay. And once we are knowing, once we are knowing g bar value, then we can write if you place a mass m at a point where g bar is known, then force is given by f bar equal to m into g bar. So here we are calculating g bar. Here g bar is already known at a point. Then if you place a mass at that point, then gravitational force acting on that point mass is m into g bar. Okay. So g bar is known as intensity of gravitational field or gravitational field strength okay but when it comes to earth we are calling as acceleration due to gravity so general name is gravitational field strength but in case of earth it is known as acceleration due to gravity okay see notes here right. It is a gravitational force experienced by a unit mass placed at that point. Okay. This is our definition of G bar. And once G bar is known, if you are placing a mass, force acting on that is given by M into G bar. Okay. And here you can see force is along G bar because since mass is opposed to Direction of F bar will be direction of G bar that you can see here. Gravitational force is along the field. Okay. In case of it is known as acceleration due to gravity.
right